Let's start a new section in our notebooks. Let's call this section Compound Gear Trains. And then don't forget your date and your title. So for me, the date today is 10-6. And to start with Compound Gear Trains, I want to start with two simple gear trains. And so let's draw our first gear train, and I'm going to start with the, the output gear of our first simple gear train. And so I'll draw this to the right, and let's say this is called gear B, and we'll say gear B has 60 teeth. And then turning gear B will be gear A, and gear A is going to be much smaller gear. And let's say gear A only has 12 teeth. And then for our second gear train, let's say it's actually attached to gear B in a wheel and axle kind of fashion. So there's a drive shaft coming out of gear B, and then at the other end of that drive shaft, we'll say is gear C. And gear C will also be small. Let's say this also has 12 teeth. And so we can even label that axle for ourselves. We can say that this is our axle or our drive shaft here connecting gear B to gear C. And so they're not meshed together as regular gears. They're just a wheel and axle. And then connected to gear C is gear D, which is connected as a gear train, a simple gear train. And let's say gear D also has 60 teeth. And then let's start with me giving you the information for gear A. Let's say we know it's rotational speed. So it's omega A is 50 rotations per minute. And then the torque for gear A, let's say, is just 20 foot-pounds. Now, we can figure out the gear ratios for A to B and the gear ratios from C to D pretty simply. So let's start with gear ratio from A to B. So the gear ratio from A to B would be what we would just say the number of teeth output divided by the number of teeth input. And we know both of those numbers. The output is 60 teeth from A to B. And let's just draw. Let's just, just say T for teeth. Okay, so 60 teeth divided by the input, which is 12 teeth. And that is a T there. Let me just scribble that out and rewrite the T for myself. That shouldn't be there. So 60 teeth divided by 12 teeth. Hopefully you can do that on your own. If not, that's what calculators are for. But 60 divided by 12 is a gear ratio of 5. And so what about the gear ratio from C to D? Well, if you look, it's the exact same formula, and it ends up being the exact same input and output. So we can just redraw this and say, okay, well, now the output is still 60 teeth, but I'm going to draw it in red to match gear D, divided by the input, which is 12 teeth. And that also equals 5. That was just a review on how to solve for simple gear ratios. Nothing new. But what if... I wanted to find the gear ratio from gear A to gear D. So gear ratio A to D, in other words, the total gear ratio of our compound gear train, which is what we built here. Whenever you have a simple gear train connected to another simple gear train by a wheel and axle kind of system, that is a compound gear train. And so there's a couple of ways to figure out the total gear ratio of a compound gear train. Let's start by looking at the rotational speed. Let's figure out the rotational speed for all of our gears. And so, well, we already know the rotational speed for gear A. And we can use that to find the rotational speed for gear B. So, well, first off, what is the rotational speed for gear B? Well, to figure this out, I'm going to use our formula for rotational speed, which is rotational speed input divided by the rotational speed output. Remember, for rotational speed, it is inverse, in over out, instead of out over in. And I'm going to set that equal to the gear ratio from A to B. Okay, and we know most of these numbers. 
I can plug in 50 rotations per minute for our input because gear A is our input. So, okay, 50 RPM on top. And then the output in this system is omega B, which we do not know. But we do know gear ratio A to B, we just figured that out, was 5. And I'm going to put 5 over 1 so I can make this a cross, multiply, and divide. So we get 50 RPMs times 1 is 50 divided by 5 gives us a rotational speed for gear B of 10 rotations per minute. And so what about the rotational speed for gear C? Well, that's not a gear train. So we cannot use these normal gear train formulas from B to C to find that rotational speed. But if you think about it, you can't have a wheel and an axle rotate at different amounts. They rotate the same. That's kind of what a wheel and axle is for, is to rotate one so the other rotates. And so anytime in a compound gear train, when you have two gears on the same drive shaft, they rotate at the same rate. And so we can say, therefore, omega C is also 10 rotations per minute. And then we can use our gear ratio formulas to solve for gear D because gear D is connected to gear C in a simple gear train. And so what is rotational speed at D? Well, to figure this out, I'm going to use my gear ratio from C to D, which we also said was 5. And I'm going to set that equal to, once again, my rotational speed input divided by my rotational speed output. And I know most of these numbers. I can say the gear ratio from C to D is 5, and I can set that equal to my rotational speed input. And in this system... That is my gear C, which is 10 rotations per minute, divided by my rotational speed output, which is gear D. And then I'm going to put 5 over 1 so I can cross, multiply, and divide. I get 10 RPMs times 1, which is 10, divided by 5, which is, of course, 2 rotations per minute. So our rotational speed at gear D is 2 RPM. And if you think about that for a second, that makes way too much sense that gear D would spin that slow. So gear B is going to spin five times slower than gear A. But gear C is going to spin at the same rate as gear B, and then gear D is going to spin five times slower than gear C. And so it makes sense that gear D will spin 25 times slower than gear A which it turns out that logic is one of the formulas for our total gear ratio in a compound gear train. We can say it is equal to our rotational speed total input divided by our rotational speed total output of our compound gear train. Remember, rotational speed is still in over out, but now we're going to take the total. We're going to go from A to D, and so we can say our rotational speed input is, of course, 12 RPM. And our rotational speed output is, of course, I'm sorry, obviously I meant 50 RPM. I'm looking at the 12 there and mixing up my numbers. So 50 rotations per minute. And let me just rewrite that 50 as well. I wrote that too fast and it didn't look good. 50 rotations per minute divided by two rotations per minute. And of course, rotations per minute cancels out. 50 divided by two is a total gear ratio of this compound gear train of 25. And so that's one way to solve for your total gear ratio is to use your rotational speeds. Another way you might have figured out on your own just by looking at your two initials and then your total. But for gear ratio total, what we could do is we could say our gear ratio a to B multiplied by our gear ratio C to D. And we know both of those numbers. That's just 5 times 5, which gives us a total gear ratio of 25. And so that's a second way to solve for the total gear ratio of a compound gear train is to multiply the individual simple gear trains together. 
And then the third way to solve for our total gear ratio is to use torque. And in fact, I'm going to solve for torque using my total gear train. I'm going to solve for the torque of gear D using our compound gear train formula. And so let's say, okay, to solve for this, we want to use our gear ratio total, which is equal to our torque output total. So torque total output divided by our torque total input. Well, I know my gear ratio total is 25. And we're looking for our torque total output. That would be torque at D. But we were given our total input, which was 20 foot-pounds. So 20 foot-pounds on bottom. I'm going to put 25 over 1 so I can cross, multiply, and divide. I get 25 times 20. I'm not sure what that is. That's what calculators are for. What's 25 times 20? We get 500, and then 500 divided by 1 is our torque at gear D is 500 foot-pounds. And if you think about it, that also makes way too much sense. Gear A has a torque of 20 foot-pounds. Gear B is five times bigger. Therefore, it will have a torque five times bigger. It will have a torque of 100 foot-pounds. Gear C is on the same axle as gear B. So gear C will have the same torque as gear B. And so then gear C also has a torque of 100 foot-pounds. But gear D is five times bigger than gear C. And so you know, 100 foot-pounds times five would be 500 foot-pounds. And so those are the three ways to solve for the gear ratio of a compound gear train. Your total torque output divided by your total torque input your total rotational input divided by your total rotational output, and then just multiplying your individual simple gear trains.